I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. Psychological warfare is described by Webster's Dictionary as the use of propaganda, threats, and other psychological techniques to mislead, intimidate, demoralize, or otherwise influence the thinking or behavior of an opponent. The Nazis referred to it as the worldview attack. For the unnamed brave millions homeward bound to take up the challenge of that future which they did so much to salvage from the brink of disaster. After the Allied victory in Europe of World War II on May 8, 1945, the Office of Strategic Services, the intelligence agency formed during World War II, conducted Operation Paperclip a program in which over 1,500 Nazi German scientists, technicians, and engineers were smuggled into the United States. President Truman's order concerning Operation Paperclip expressly excluded anyone even remotely associated with the Nazi party. However, the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, a subcommittee of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, expunged from public record all Nazi party affiliations in regards to the German scientists. From this exodus of evil sprung a variety of mind control operations. The Central Intelligence Agency succeeded the Office of Strategic Services during World War II as a result of the National Security Act of 1947, which granted the CIA no police or law enforcement functions either at home or abroad to coordinate secret espionage activities against the Axis powers for the branches of the United States Armed Forces. Secretly, Project Chatter was conducted in order to identify agents synthetic and natural that could enhance interrogation. Project Bluebird experimented with the possibility of using humans as mind-controlled warfare agents. CIA Director Alan Dulles was quoted as complaining that they did not have enough human guinea pigs to try these extraordinary techniques. Thus, officially, the MKUltra project was sanctioned in 1953. The project received over 25 million and involved hundreds of experiments on human subjects at 80 different institutions. The first chairman of the World Psychiatric Association, as well as the president of the American and Canadian Psychiatric Associations, psychiatrist Dr. Donald Cameron, creator of the psychic driving concept, was paid 69000 per year from 1957 to 1964 to carry out MKUltra experiments in Canada for the CIA. His mind-erasing experiments conducted on patients with minor problems such as anxiety disorders and depression without their consent caused long-term damage. But his research also pioneered the CIA's two-stage psychological torture method. If you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to get the consent of the ruled. And this they will do, partly by drugs, as I foresaw in uh, in Brave New World, partly by these uh, new techniques of, uh, uh, of propaganda. Uh, they will do it by bypassing the sort of rational side of man and appealing to his uh, subconscious and his uh, deeper emotions and uh, his physiology even. And so making him actually love his slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new a regime, but they will be happy in situation where they oughtn't to be happy. Human experimentation on the U.S. population finally creeped into the public eye when in the summer of 1975, Congressional Church Committee reports revealed to the public for the first time that the CIA and the Department of Defense had conducted experiments on both unwitting and cognizant human subjects as part of a huge program to control human behavior through the use of psychoactive drugs. In 1973, due to the widespread panic caused by Watergate, just think how much you're going to be messy. You don't have Nixon to kick around anymore. CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all MKUltra files destroyed. Most of those documents were destroyed. However, bureaucratic red tape bungling allowed 20,000 documents to survive, as they had been incorrectly stored in a financial records building. We are not professing 
to tell you the complete story of these activities. Yeah. We are professing to tell you the complete story that we know. Right. But these records that we've uncovered yeah. don't tell the story. They tell pieces of it. President Gerald Ford issued the first executive order on intelligence activities in 1976, prohibiting experimentation with drugs on human subjects except with the informed consent in writing and witnessed by a disinterested party. Subsequent orders by President Carter and President Reagan focused in on the directive that applies to any human experimentation. We have quite a lot of detailed information uh, and we will evaluate it and we will include any um, evidence of wrongdoing or any evidence of impropriety in our final report and make recommendations. I'm Chris Nicola, born July of 1962, rendering me 32 years of age. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. All these experiments were performed on me in conjunction with mind control techniques and drugs in Tucson, Arizona. Dr. Green had electrodes on my body, including my head. He used what looked like an overhead projector and repeatedly said he was burning different images into my brain while a red light flashed aimed at my forehead. In between each sequence, he used electric shock on my body and told me to go deeper and deeper, deeper while repeating each image would go deeper into my brain and I would do whatever he told me to do. He often tied me down in a cage, which was near his office. Between 1972 and 1976, he and his assistants were sometimes careless and left the cage unlocked. <coughs> Whenever physically possible, I snuck into his office and found files with reports and memos addressed to CIA and military personnel. Included in these files were project, subproject, subject, and experiment names with some code numbers for radiation and mind control experiments, which I have submitted in your written documentation. Recent declassified documents reveal the CIA's interrogation tests involving one of their own unwitting agents with an AI computer. This virtual interrogator from 1983 paved the way to carry out AI chatbot interviews with an unknowing public. The techniques of interrogation, control, and mental manipulation have been brought into the modern world on a global scale. Sky Titus Maitreya claims to have been led into MKUltra sexual slavery by a chatbot she engaged with as a teenager yes. residing in Minnesota. They're like directing me where to go and keeping me like conscious and telling me to stay alert and all these different things. So I'm like being programmed in some kind of like occult way. It kept me autonomous, but it also kept me in control of them and then it didn't tie me back to them. When I would be played these, these memories or these frequencies or symbols through EMF, it would trigger this like this like powerlessness over sex because I would be subconsciously relating it back to like a molestation. As MK Ultra slave numbers quietly rise and our political leaders become increasingly corrupt, we may never see another investigation on the scale and scope of the church investigation. Do you think that the CIA and military intelligence agencies and the FBI have used the emergency provisions both in law and by emergency agency to have contingency plans which threaten the liberty of American citizens. The United States government has perfected a technological capability. At the same time, that capability at any time could be turned around on the American people. There would be no place to hide the technological capacity that the intelligence community has given the government could enable it to impose total tyranny. John Bound, Infowars.com. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. 
We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty.